everybody. My name is Andrew Schultz. I'm a member of the North Reading Select Board, also a member of the Union Congregational Church, and we're here today with two fine uh, ladies of North Reading here. We have Ellen Wiklansky and Nancy Parsons. Um, they are here today to talk about the North Reading Food Pantry. Um, right now, the Food Pantry has been in Town Hall for a number of years, and the Union Congregational Church, in conjunction with their 300th anniversary, are attempting to basically build a food pantry on their premises right now. So. I want to start by saying thank you guys for coming uh, down today and talking sure. about this great project. And I'm going to start, uh, Nancy, with you. Uh, the Union Congregational Church has its 300th anniversary, which is an amazing yeah. feat. And what are the church's mm -hmm. plans for celebrating that anniversary? Well, the church will be 300 years old um, next June. And that's a big deal. And we had several goals in mind. We wanted to... Uh, point out that we are still strong after 300 years and we're looking forward into going into our fourth decade from a position of strength. We feel very blessed about that. It's uh, not all churches can make that statement. Um, and we also wanted to remind the town that our roots, the town's roots and the church root is the same. And uh, we just sort of wanted to say, you know, celebrate with us, celebrate our joint history. So we decided the best way to do that, or a good way to do it, would be to give a significant gift to the town. And it took us about um, a minute and a half to come up with what that gift could be. We were looking at what needs to be done, food pantry. So that was what we decided to do. We would uh, try to give the food pantry a much needed home. So that's the genesis. And when we turn 300 next June, we hope to be able to make that gift either through a groundbreaking or we very much would like it to be an open house for the food pantry. So that's the thought behind what we're doing. And Ellen, you've been involved with the food pantry for how long now? Oh, about 14 years, 14 I years. think. Yeah. And if you could explain mm -hmm. to the public, what does the food pantry do and who does it serve? Oh, well, the food pantry um, serves about 100 um, families, households in North Reading on a regular basis. Um, people can use the pantry twice a week, twice a month, rather. They can come in. We're open on Mondays. They can come in Monday morning or Monday evening. And it's um, if they feel they have a need to use, uh, their budget requires a little more help. They, we don't ask for the income levels or anything at the beginning. If they do also want financial assistance because they can't pay their electric bill or the landlord's knocking at the door, um, we also provide financial assistance through Christian Community Service, which is the umbrella organization, and the food pantry is part of that. So if they ask for financial assistance, we ask for income, uh, what their income is and why, why they can't pay their rent or whatever it is. Um, but they're welcome to use the pantry twice a month, and um, we get food from the Greater Boston Food Bank, which we get for very low money. Um, and then we have donations. You know, there are uh, places at the library, town hall, post office, where people can drop donations of, of food. And then we also sometimes have to buy food ourselves. Um, but people use the pantry, and um, we have many people tell us we're one of the nicest pantries around. <laughs> and do you and have you know, perishable and non-perishable foods? Only, and when, once we started with the Greater Boston Food Bank, we could get perishable food. So we have frozen meat and fresh vegetables and um, cheese and margarine and yogurt, um, um, that kind of stuff, vegetables, fruits, um, that's fresh, yep. and then frozen meats. And, and where are you located right now? Right now we're in the town hall in the, in what used, because it was originally a school, mm -hmm. so we're on the stage of, of what had once been the Murphy School, and then we also set up tables in the gym where we have the, the, and our freezer and refrigerators are in the corner of the gym. So we set up tables and people check in and wait in the gym until it's their turn to shop within the pantry. And people shop on their own, They, uh, depending on the size of their family, how much food they can get. 
So it's not like we just hand them three bags of food and call it good. They can pick and choose what they need based on certain levels. And, um, but the gym is also used by uh, other groups in town because it's the town hall. So after we close the pantry, we have to put all the tables away, put all the stuff away. And, and then when we're open again in the evening on that same day, we bring the tables and the chairs and so set up all So it's safe to say you're pretty pressed for space over there. We're pretty pressed for space. The actual pantry itself is about 450 square feet. And our new space will be about 1,100 square feet plus and upstairs where we can store some things. So it will be a, a gigantic help And I understand the new space will be ADA compliant and you'll mm -hmm. have more refrigeration capabilities. Mm -hmm. What other refrigeration capabilities we'll have in a new space that we don't have now? Oh, that's my <laughs> favorite part. We will have a, we hope we will have a walk-in freezer. Um, and if we have a, right now we have one freezer uh, that the Rotary Club got, got for us several years ago. Um, and so that's where we have frozen meat, but if we have a walk-in freezer, we will have clearly more space and we can get frozen vegetables and frozen fruits and just more um, choices, healthier choices mm -hmm. than what, because certainly frozen vegetables are better than canned vegetables, which yep. is what we have now. So we'll have more space for more food, better nutrition, better quality. That's great. Yeah. How else will the new space be better than the current space? Oh. I know we don't have all day so, here, so but yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, it will be our own space. Right. So we can go there we'll we can go there when we need to. We'll have a office area. We'll have a separate place in that office where if a client wants to speak confidentially to someone, uh, to one of our volunteers, they can do that without everyone who's in the gym seeing and this is who's confidential. There? Everyone um, who goes to the food pantry, there's, it's not a, as far as it's not a public record, people can find out who's using it, who's not. Oh no, oh no. We, we, we want to protect the, absolutely. Know, the dignity of everyone. And for else. that very, that's the same reason, because uh, this is a small town, that we don't allow anyone who's a student in North Reading schools to volunteer in the pantry when it's open because of confidentiality reasons. Right. Every, everybody knows somebody in town. Yep. So, um, yeah. Will the clients be better served in the new space versus the current space? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be, one, it's, it'll be in the center of town, mm -hmm. so it'll be near the senior center and Peabody Court, and people will have, um, so I think we might get clients who are eligible to use the pantry but haven't been using it, which will be to their advantage. And do you have a lot of seniors who use the pantry? <laughs> yeah. We have uh, about 30 seniors, I think, right yeah. now. Uh, and we have about um, about 100 households altogether, and right. about 30 of those are, are just uh, seniors. That's great. I mean, I know so. from being in town politics, this is something that people don't know about. We have a lot of people in this town that are in need. Everyone thinks of North Reading as an affluent mm -hmm. suburban town, which it is in a lot of respects, but there are a lot of people in need that really need these services, and it's great that you guys are offering this to, for the public mm -hmm. so, you know, people that do need can eat. You know, right, I, exactly. Nobody should be hungry. Ex exactly. Yeah. No one should be hungry. And there are people who we have new clients all the time. Well, every time we're open, almost, uh, we have a new client or two people who come in and say, I didn't know this existed. Well, and I don't know how this is a good way to get that news out to them. But um, And I know you guys uh, put a lot of hours in over there. And I'm assuming your salary is the same as my select and pay. Yeah. A nice yeah. round number? Yeah, and yeah. big, big <laughs> you round You guys are all number. volunteers. Big, we're all volunteers. Yeah. We're all volunteers. And um, yes. I know you guys yes. put a lot of hours over there, and I want we the public do. to know that. Yes. Oh, we were there a lot. Yeah. All right. The big question while we're talking about money, how much is this project going to cost? I'll ask well, Nancy this question. And I will answer it. Uh, but I, I want to back up just a minute, if I could, and sure. talk about the building itself. Uh, that is the church's uh, gift to make the building available, but it will be made available on a long-term lease, which someone will help us write. Um, and uh, it is the job then of a committee comprised of the board from CCS, Christian Community Service, and the 300th committee, anniversary committee. It will fall to us to engineer 
the fund drive that will raise the money. Mm -hmm. And now I will answer your question. How much is this going to And before you go there, yeah. when we say there's going to be a lease, the church is going to lease the this building for a dollar a year, some yeah. other nominal yeah. figure. It's, yeah, it's there. And They're basically it, giving the and building. For, yeah, and yeah. for as long as the food pantry wants to be there. Right. It's, but, you know, it's important to understand that. No one's so, making money off of any of this. This is no, all volunteer no, no, across no, the board. No, that's, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, so this building is presently called the Annex, and it's not in the best of shape, but it was in better shape than we realized. And we had a structural engineer and an architect look at it, and I believe the building inspector has, is aware of it, and we have um, a, a general manager who's going to be in charge of construction. And so everybody pronounced it sound. And then Ellen sat down with the architect and told him what a food pantry needs. And so he drew up preliminary plans that you're very excited about, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. So with all of that work done, then we could cost out what the building would cost. If I could just interrupt you, for the yeah. public at home, if you're at the Union Congregational Church and you're facing the church on Haverhill Street, um, the church is straight ahead of you, the parsonage is on the right. This is built, it looks like a, almost like a barn. Behind the parsonage, it would be to the right of the church. There's a photo of it right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry, you were saying? Okay. Uh, um, okay, so we had to cost out what it would take to make this building ready for the food pantry, uh, make the building strong, and fit it out to the food pantry needs. And I think. I think we, we're not conservative. I, th I think we built in some contingencies, mm -hmm. but we came up with a figure of $220,000. So that was a goal for our fundraising. And people say, well, suppose you get more than that. Well, we should be so lucky. Yeah. But if we do <laughs> get more than that, hint, um, then it goes right to the food pantry. So right. it's a win-win. We've all been We've given it and... Uh, and you might be able to upgrade some of the uh, yeah. renovations that you're going to do to something yeah. a little more elaborate. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know what? The whole community will have skin in this game. It's not the people of the church. You know, we, we did our part. Plus, as individuals, they, the people will contribute also. Uh, but the citizens of this town are very excited about the food pantry, and they've always supported it well. And uh, everybody we've talked to has said, oh, this is great. This is great. So we're optimistic about reaching that goal. Did I answer your question enough? Yes, you did. Okay. And how are we going to get the money? What types of fundraising are you guys doing to help okay. raise that large uh, sum of cash? Well, we're looking at grants. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking at individuals. We have already established a GoFundMe page and you know it's chugging along very nicely really but we are going to have to start canvassing and making determined calls on individuals and businesses in the town uh, looking for gifts and substantial contributions. Do you have an address or a website that you could give out to the public? Yes we do. Would you like to read that? Sure. Uh, well, we have the uh, post office box, which is P.O. Box 626, North Reading, Ness, where our treasurer will pick up the, the mail. And who should that check be made out to? To the Home Fund slash CCS, or the okay. Home Fund. So that's and Home the, Fund slash CCS. CCS. And the fund is in the, is in, for the food pantry. It's not, in, it's not a church fund. It's, yep. the, it's the pantry fund. It's a separate fund just for this project, as opposed to our regular. And, and another thing for the public, too, because I've had this question asked of me, even though Christian Services is involved in this, this is a non-denominational food pantry. We, you don't check people's religions when they come in oh, for food. Oh, not yeah, at all. Not at all. It's anyone who's in need, whether they're Absolutely. religious, not religious, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. religion they do belong to. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's a question I have been yes. asked in the past. Yes. I want to clarify that. Yes. And um, how, you have a website, too? And we have um, we have a, a website. Uh, uh, GoFundMe page, which is www.gofundme.com 
uh, slash NRFP home fund. But that's, if you're on Facebook at all, it's on the food pantry website, uh, Facebook page or the Community Connection, lots of um, places where people in town look for things anyway. That's um, great. So That's great. Yes. Again, how many families do you think the new food pantry would be able to serve if you have a larger um, oh. with because again I know right now you're limited that you can only be open when town halls open and you have certain restraints that you have yeah if you have your own do you think you'd be able to expand this to more families by having it's basically its own space with its own in and out and, and not subject to town hall rules we could probably yeah we yeah. could be open more hours if we needed to be um, it will be easier I mean, right now, there's a few steps up to get into the pantry itself, so it will be ADA compliant. It will be, I think the shopping experience will be faster for right. people, and, um, and we're, most of the volunteers are nice. And for those who haven't been in the, the food pantry that's at Town Hall right now, it's really like a little grocery store. I mean, it, you, it has shelves, it has sections, it's, it's almost like a little grocery yes. store. It's kind of neat when you yes. go see it. it it's, uh, it's kind of surprising yeah. how much variety it's and very how organized. much stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and we don't just have food. We have, um, you have like diapers, diapers, paper products. Yeah, paper products, yeah. Um, shampoo, soap, you right. know, dish detergent, stuff like that that people cannot use their their um, SNAP benefits to to buy anything that's taxable. So that's a big help, right, to the people who use it. And right now, where is the funding coming from so far? I know you, you mentioned you're gonna have an outreach program with the community as far as targeting businesses, individuals and such. Is it just been individual citizens donating money so far? Or? Pretty much. Yeah. We have some seed money yeah. and we have monies pledged. So um, we've got a good start. Okay. Mm -hmm. we've, got, we've, we've actually got a good start. Nice. So, yeah. That's and we'll great. probably do regular fund, you know, events. Um, we haven't quite got yeah. to that yet, but I'm sure that will happen. That's true. And you're looking to target this for the summer of 2020? We hope to June do. in 2000. June in yes. 2020. Yeah. Because I know the church was from, it's the original church in North Reading, and it's from 1720 the church was mm -hmm. established. So, yeah, it'd be 300 years. Yeah. It's a long time. It's a long and time. And frankly, yeah. you had to have an established church in, in order to have a community. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we had established the church and built a meeting house, then that meeting house was where all the town function took place. So that's why the, there's the historic route. Yep, and I'd be remiss too. I know Reverend Richard Hughes, uh, the pastor at the Congregational Church, has been very helpful in getting this program off the, the ground as well, and I want to make sure we mention his name as so, well. Today. Yes, he's very supportive, and yep. yes, he's been very helpful. That's great. As far as the, the food pantry is concerned, um, how are you going to advertise this fundraising campaign? I know you, you guys have been on Facebook, uh, and I know the transcript Trans wrote a nice article. Right. We're doing this video mm -hmm. here today. Yeah. What other as avenues are you guys looking at to get the word out there as far as, um, you know, that we're looking for funding and looking for fundraising? Well, right now we're in what I call the awareness mm -hmm. part, which you need to have some kind of awareness before you go out soliciting funds. Um, so we are... Uh, doing a consistent program uh, through social media, um, making personal calls on influence people, uh, those people who in, shape influence, mm -hmm. and because uh, that can be very helpful. Um, we are planning on doing the town day on yeah. June That's great. 2nd, and are looking forward to really uh, presenting an awareness there. Um, so it's word of mouth, it's uh, whatever advertising we can come up with. I know you two guys showed up at one of our select board meetings yes. uh, a meeting or two ago, and I know our board, it was very well received by the five of us. I mean, I think everybody supports the project. And, yeah. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, it's, just, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah. right. And the churches, the individual churches are also supportive. The other churches in town. The now. other churches yeah. in town. We got a donation today from yes. Martin's Pond Church. That's so, great. So yeah. I hope the other churches will, uh, yeah. you know, as an institution, give to, to this. Um, That's great. Okay, so, yeah. I'm second. so I want to thank you guys again for coming out today. And again, I want to remind the public, you want to make the checks payable to the Home Fund slash CCS. P.O. Box 626, North Reading, Massachusetts, 01864. 
or you can go online to gofundme.com backslash NRFP home fund. Guys, thanks for coming in here and it's oh, a great thanks. project and I hope it keeps rolling along. So do we too. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks.